Hello everybody, my name is Wim Reaper and welcome back to another one of my videos or welcome if you're new here. Today I am doing a speed build for the third house that I've made for the 100 baby challenge. If you don't watch my challenge, don't worry, or if you'd like to check it out, please go ahead. Um, it should be probably in the playlist here. So I am making a two-story modern home because in this challenge I've just realized I have not done a single modern build and I generally... I don't really like, wouldn't want to live in one in real life, but I love the way they look in game. So that's why I decided to go for the style, also just something a little bit different. Uh, I did call the last house a modern beach house, but compared to this one, I would consider it to be much more just like contemporary. So this house, I really wanted to make more luxurious, more fitting for a celebrity since the matriarch is now actually a three, a three star celebrity in the game so i thought she should probably have a place to live that kind of reflects that my budget was 200,000 simoleons but i didn't actually use all of it which i was surprised by i even got some like really nice appliances and plumbing and everything and i still didn't use all of the budget so that means that we will have some extra money if we feel something is missing to add it in once i start living in this home um, also, that means we can take some of our furniture with us when we go, which is really handy because I thought it's always cheaper to transfer it than to completely start over new. Another thing I want to say is, um, somehow I didn't record the furnishing of the first floor, but I will put screenshots for that and you'll still get to see a little bit because I do tweak some things here and there. And um, the overall shape of the build does change quite a bit actually from the ending, like the overall like roof design and stuff stays the same, but it gets a lot bigger because I really underestimated how much 200,000 simoleons can do. Because usually when I'm building, I'm not building with a budget and I tend to go like really high for how much it costs. So um, when I was building with a budget and was much more mindful of how much money I was spending, I only ended up spending like 100,000, like 110,000 simoleons by the time I thought I was finished. So we added in even a pool, which is like super duper luxurious. I never thought that we would have it like so quickly in this challenge, but that'll help with, um, I think, stress and it'll be kind of fun to have pool parties. And also, it'll help with fitness skill for the teens, so that's something really nice. Um, I do put a treadmill in as well, attached to Peggy's room, but I thought it would be nice to be able to get the fitness skill done in more unique ways than just constantly running on the treadmill. It's not super fun to watch or do. So that's basically where I'm headed with this build, is I wanted to add in a ton of skill building objects, a ton of decorations that before were just like unnecessary because I didn't realize how rich we really have got in this challenge and it kind of stuns me honestly. <laughs> like I thought it would take like three or four generations to be able to afford a house this good. So I'm really happy, I'm really happy with it. It's on the gallery if you want to download it as well. It'll be under my username there which is also Wim Reaper. Or I think it's also called like 100 Baby Mini Mansion. Yeah, something like that. So if you want to use this in your game, go right ahead. It is pretty well suited to the 100 Baby Challenge. Um, the kids room has three beds. Toddlers have two but could fit three if you wanted. And the teens have two. So I think that's pretty much um, going to cover you basically no matter what with this challenge. Unless you happen to have like two sets of triplets right back to back, but it's easy, it's an easy build to expand off of as well, which is also why I liked it because I found with the beach house, um, there wasn't really any way I could remodel it to suit our needs because of just like the shape of it and everything. It would make it really, really difficult to modify the shape without having to redesign the entire house. So for this one, I'm happy that we could add like a wing off of the master bedroom or a wing off of the toddler bedroom if we wanted like a playroom or even a wing off of the kitchen. And then we would have plenty more room, which I'm really excited that I don't have to design a completely new house next time I go into the game then for when we have more money. In addition, I have finished my end game 
house for the hunter baby challenge like i decided i would make what i think is like the absolute optimal house for the end of this challenge and honestly it's only 50,000 simoleons more than this one which is kind of insane so I don't know if that's any longer the end game, but I do really like the house and I'm excited to play with it. I will post the speed build for that one sometime in the near future. But um, basically, we have like way more money than I ever thought we would. I also did want to try to start doing some different businesses. Programming is pretty lucrative, but I thought it would be kind of fun to try to use the bee boxes from Seasons because I've never actually used those before and I thought that would be really fun to way to make money basically. I don't know if it's even linked to a skill or anything but that would be really cool and I do want to try to start gardening like I know it takes a while to build up the skill but I thought it would be a really cute skill for a team to get up like maybe Gwendolyn could get that skill up since she is a spellcaster something like that but Basically, I'm just trying to think of very, very practical ways to make this house um, fit together and like still be really, really luxurious looking. Which honestly, like it's not that big of a house, but it feels like super luxurious and I feel like adding in a couple bedrooms here and there to give the kids some more space won't be any problem at all. So I am adding in quite a few skylights in this build. I really like the idea of making it feel like bigger than it is because it is a mini mansion, it's not a full mansion. So I did want to add in a lot of like details and decorations. I was going to put in those stone things as like an accent and then realized how much money they were <laughs> and decided against it. This is before I realized how much extra cash we would have left over at the end. but. I'm really happy with um, just how it all turned out. I think the inside I am pretty happy with, except the kitchen looks a bit closed off now because I had to I had to add in an extra wall to make it actually support the second floor, you know, without making the flow of everything else weird. So I'm not sure if maybe I'll change that at some point or what, but I'm happy with basically everything except for that. I wanted it to be a little bit more open plan was the only real problem. So this is basically the outside mostly done. Um, basically we have two entrances, one in the front, one in the back. That should solve a lot of rooting issues because <laughs> uh, once you have entrances on the second floor, the Sims just don't know what to do apparently. So hopefully this will be a lot more usable. I also make it so that the entrance to the back is only going into the yard. So the kids should all walk out the front door while they go to school. The toddlers, if they do go in the front for whatever reason, will be easy to go get. So I'm really glad I sorted out that because that was the, one of the biggest things I didn't like with the house that we have now. If you guys want to check out the speed build for that one as well, or I don't remember if it's a speed build or a let's build, but it should be in the playlist. Um, I know that might be some of your styles some more, so if you like, uh, are looking for a 100 baby home, but you don't really know, you don't like this one specifically, yeah, I would recommend checking that one out. And I also do have a first baby home that I made, so also you could check that one out. But basically I'm just putting in the finishing touches for the outside and then we'll be headed to decorating the second floor since, like I said, I um, kind of accidentally skipped the first floor on this one. So here it is. This is the kids room. I really liked the idea of keeping it nice and light and airy, but I also did want it to look kind of like friendly for a kid, you know? I find that it's really hard to get a good balance between playful and um, sophisticated looking, but with this room I'm really happy with how it turned out. I also added in some beds that I'm not particularly fond of, but they basically they have like a way, way better comfort rating than some of the less comfortable ones and aren't nearly as expensive or as obnoxious looking as these canopy ones that I was looking at. So we do go with um, these cabin kind of style ones, but I think in white they're not too obnoxious. I just don't like the headboards on them is basically the thing. 
And I probably could have done something to solve the headboard situation, but I just thought it wasn't really worth it. <laughs> so we're going with that. And I think being white and the other objects in the room being kind of like pops of color really helps with that. So I add in basically almost every kid's fun item that I can think of in here because like outside of the room we have a bit of a kid's play area slash skill building area. So I did actually end up adding in the Void Critters uh, playset. I don't know if that's going to be a good or bad idea. I don't want them to spend too much time doing that. But also it might be kind of cute and fun to do that once in a while. Especially since we have extra income, we can buy them like the Pokemon or the Void Critter or whatever cards they are. And that would be really cute for them to have like little battles and stuff. So yeah, that's the little nook I was talking about. There's something for creativity, for mental, and for social right there. And then of course, if you want to get up your activity skill, there'll be the outdoor play equipment. I also did add in a little desk here for the teens to do their homework. And I do put a laptop. So that means that the kids can practice typing and the teens can like practice um, whatever programming, video gaming, whatever skill that they want without having to kick Rita off of the computer, which- or not Rita, oh my gosh, Peggy! It's been so long too, like, I wouldn't usually get that mixed up, but Peggy actually in her room now has her own special computer, which is like the best one you can get without unlocking anything, so I thought that was like a good place to splurge after figuring out how much money we had left, so yeah, and also I get her a real piano instead of a keyboard. That's another good thing to splurge on. You don't have to repair it. So we're kind of moving on up in the world. We even have a fish tank and everything. Something that's so completely unnecessary but looks so good. So that's basically like we're adding things for the looks. And that kind of astonished me. Like when I was doing this build, I did not expect to be able to add anything just because it looked good. I was kind of like, well, this wall needs a painting. I'll try to get the cheapest one. And it ended up being completely unnecessary because we had so much leftover money, but that was what kind of made it more fun because at the end I wasn't like strapped for cash. I could just add anything I wanted basically. We even get like, like I said, we get the best oven. So the kids should never be burning down the house if they're learning how to cook, stuff like that. It's just like, it's stuff that you take for granted when you're building without a family to play with. And a lot of the time that's what I do is I just build a build and I'm like well it's kind of expensive someone will be able to afford it and then that's it but you kind of you take it less for granted when you have a real budget so yeah this is the teens room uh I did want to keep it fairly simple I didn't really I don't really love this room that much but honestly I think it turned out pretty well like I think that it's inviting enough and also it looks a little bit more mature than the kids room but still kind of playful and has a few good skill building objects in there for them. Mostly creative, I think there's just like a bunch of instruments, but you know, that's just what could fit without it looking weird. So there's an easel in here and a microphone and a guitar. So we have some new skills actually because we never had a microphone before. Now they can practice like comedy on the microphone and they can learn the singing skill, which might be one that would be kind of fun to do. I don't know if we've ever done that one. I think we might have tried, but I don't think we completed it. And this is the teen's bathroom. Um, so I really like the tiny living stuff. I didn't have this pack before actually. I just got it, I don't know, about two weeks ago or something when there was that sale on the store and I am in love with it. I just like, you guys are going to see so many builds with the tiny living stuff in it and honestly I'm not even sorry because I just love it. I think this is one of the best stuff packs for sure. I don't know if it's better than laundry day. I would be inclined to say so right now, but that's probably just because it's still new to me. Um, but I really, I appreciate the pack for sure. So that's that bathroom. I really love that one for sure and think that it just looks really cute. I added an awning so that the, um, the treadmill wouldn't break when it rains. Because at first I was thinking like, oh, it'll be good practice for the teens to just have something to repair. But I actually did leave a few um, not as good toilets and stuff for that reason. And I think like just having the treadmill 
get all fried in the rain isn't exactly what we're going for. And honestly, I don't even know if you can repair treadmills or if they're just broken forever. So that was not a risk that I really wanted to take. But you can see some of the downstairs furnishing right here while we're adding a built-in TV stand kind of thing. I just wanted to frame it a little bit more, make it look a little less bare. I don't really think it needed it, but like I said, that was the glory of having leftover money, is you could just add things. And then this is Peggy's room here. I wanted to add some makeup shelves where she could just grab stuff. Also, she has a separated nursery, which means that the babies will not always wake her up if she's sleeping. Then I can let her sleep a little bit longer before she has to take care of them, and I think that is just like a really good solution to have that archway there. If I'm wrong, then I can add a door. Don't really care. <laughs> but um, I don't think that that's the case. So we're just gonna do the outside here and then that'll be the end. I add in the bee boxes. I don't know if I do that off camera or on camera. I also did the basketball hoop, which we've never really done before. And the water bucket and all that stuff. Yeah, we do add the bee boxes and I kind of make like a little alcove there, which I try to fence off without it looking like a fence with like the shrubs and stuff. So then hopefully the children and stuff won't get stung by bees if Peggy is working in there, for example, or if one of the teens is working in there. So that was my whole reasoning behind that, is I don't think that the bees can go through arches, which yay because <laughs> uh otherwise that would be uh kind of horrible if the kids are playing outside and then the bees suddenly decide that they're gonna get a little bit grumpy but that's basically the end of the build um i have to add the pool off camera i think but i will leave you guys with the screenshots and i hope that you guys enjoyed it again it's on the gallery under wim reaper my username and yeah i hope that you guys have a lovely day goodbye